A radar gun sends a signal towards a moving vehicle. The rebounding signal will have a different frequency because the vehicle is moving towards the radar gun. Well, it could be towards or away, it doesn't matter. It's the change in frequency or pitch of the signal that is used to calculate the speed of the moving vehicle. Now, in general, the gun is not directed at the vehicle along a straight line um, in the direction of the vehicle's motion, but it's directed at some angle theta to the line of motion of the vehicle. Vector V is shown up here, but I'm showing it down here now as well, along the line of the vehicle's motion. Um, so we project the tip of vector V onto the line joining the gun to the vehicle. And this gives us the component of vector V along this line here. So we just project the tip at right angles onto this line. So we have this right angle triangle formed. And uh, this side is adjacent to theta in the right angle triangle. So this side has magnitude V cos theta. So this is the magnitude now, so I don't have the underline here. The magnitude of vector V is just V without the underline. So basically, if a person was standing here, they would see the vehicle move towards them with a speed V. But to, to a person positioned here, or to the radar gun, uh, the vehicle w moves along this line. Well, it doesn't actually move along this line, but the projection of the motion of the vehicle onto this line has a smaller speed V cos theta. A safety inspector wishes to check the speed of a train along a straight piece of track. She stands 10 meters to the side of the track, so this distance S is 10 meters, and uses a radar gun. If the reading on the gun is to be within 5% of the true speed of the train, how far away from the approaching train should the reading be taken? So as we saw before, the gun will register a speed of V cos theta. Now, um, this is one way to indicate the magnitude of V. The other way is just to write V without any lines or any underline. Suppose we want the reading on the gun to be 5% below the true um, speed of the vehicle. 5% of V taken from V. Well, that's the same as 95% of V. From this, we get that the cos of theta, this angle, is 0.95. So remember, we are looking for D, the distance that she must stand from the train, so that the cos of theta is 0.95. But we are given that S is equal to 10. So the sine of theta is 10 over the opposite over hypotenuse. Now we can use a famous identity here. The identity says that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. And if we rearrange that, we get sine theta equals root 1 minus cos squared theta. We want to solve for d, so we can interchange d and this square root term to get this here. And uh, we have that cos theta is 0.95, plug that in. And if we work that out, we get 32.03. So if she stands at a distance of exactly 32.03 meters from the train, or when the train reaches that distance from her, of course, then the value that she gets on the radar gun will be 5% uh, below the true speed of the train. Now, if we increase D, it means that we decrease the denominator here. So everything else being the same. Well, the distance uh, S is still 10. Increasing D means decreasing this denominator. But decreasing the denominator means increasing this number here, making this number closer to 1. But making this number closer to 1 means that um, cos theta, well, cos theta will be approaching 1, which means that theta will be approaching 0. So the angle between um, this line and th the direction of the vehicle will be decreasing to zero. So the percentage error in the reading will decrease, will be less than 